and its suspended rail cars back. I'm Nick Ainelli. What Omicron has done to Maryland schools. I'm John Aaron. Wall Street in the green. The Dow up 381. The Nasdaq also up 381. And the S&P up 78. It's 1 o'clock. This is CBS News on the Hour. Sponsored by the Exogen Temporal Scanner. I'm Steve Kathan. Major news from the U.S. Supreme Court. Word that 83-year-old Associate Justice Stephen Breyer is planning to retire at the end of the current term. CBS's Steve Dorsey in Washington. Breyer has been a pillar of the Supreme Court's liberal wing since he was nominated by former President Clinton in 1994. Conservative Justice Clarence Thomas is the court's only current member to have served longer. Breyer has authored landmark rulings in issues ranging from health care to gay rights. Progressive groups have called on President Biden to nominate a black woman to the court. I'm Stephen Portnoy. As a candidate in the summer of 2020, the president told CBS News he he would not publish the names of possible contenders, but he did say this. We are putting together a list of a group of African-American women who are qualified and have the experience to be in the court. Any short list to replace Stephen Breyer would certainly include D.C. Circuit Court Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson, who was confirmed to the appeals bench last summer by a 53 to 44 Senate vote. Well, the word from the government is COVID case numbers and hospitalizations have been going down over the last week. Deaths continue to be on the rise. CDC Director Rochelle Walensky says the Omicron variant remains a threat. Milder does not mean mild, and we cannot look past the strain on our health systems and substantial number of deaths, nearly 2,200 a day, as a result of the extremely transmissible Omicron variant. The U.S. Embassy in Ukraine is urging Americans who are there to consider leaving now. CBS's Weijia Jiang says officials believe Moscow could act with measures that fall short of a full-scale invasion but are still damaging. There are growing concerns that Vladimir Putin could cut off oil and gas shipments that run through Ukraine in the coming weeks. A senior administration official says that the White House is working with suppliers around the world to prevent an energy shortage. The 57-year-old Virginia man who wore a Camp Auschwitz sweatshirt during the Capitol attack has pleaded guilty to charges that carry a six-month prison term. Photos of Robert Packer on that day went viral. The Coast Guard's recovered a body as it searches for people who were on a suspected smuggler's boat that capsized off the Florida coast. Captain Joanne Burdian says they're still looking for signs of 38 others. Every member of every crew of the assets involved in the search are singularly focused on locating survivors and finding additional information that can help direct our search. One survivor who was found says no one on board was wearing a life jacket. Wall Street, right now the Dow is up 291 points. This is CBS News. If you're checking for fever, the leading sign of COVID-19, beware of dangerously inaccurate non-contact thermometers. Instead, learn about Exergen at exergen.com. 103 on WTOP, hump day Wednesday, January 26. Sunny and 26 degrees now, down to the teens tonight. And good afternoon. I'm Mark Lewis. And I'm Deborah Feinstein. Here are the top local stories we're following this hour. Back in the fall of 2020, work on the Purple Line light rail project stalled amid contractor disputes with the state of Maryland over cost overruns. Well, now that project, which would be one of the first in the U.S. to rely on private financing, is getting back on track. Matthew Pollock with the Maryland Transit Administration offered an update on plans for the 16-mile Purple Line, the light rail project which will connect Montgomery and Prince George's counties. The updated contract cost is $3.4 billion. Pollock said what he called full-scale construction will resume in the spring. And the entire 16.2 length of the Purple Line will open to passengers in fall of 2026. Pollock spoke before the three-member Board of Public Works, including the chair, Governor Larry Hogan. The contracts were approved unanimously. When asked about the fares riders could expect to pay, Maryland Transit Administrator Holly Arnold said... So at this point, it's a little too early to know what the, the fares are going to be. Kate Ryan, WTOP News. When will more than half of Metro's rail cars return to service, ending a months-long train shortage? We're now hearing from the independent agency that oversees safety on Metro. It says WMATA has no plan 
and no timeline for getting those 7,000 series rail cars running again. Before Metro can put its 7,000 series rail cars back on the tracks, it needs to develop a way to effectively measure and monitor the width between the car wheels, and it's not clear how long that's going to take. Metro Rail has not provided a specific timeline. David Mayer, Chief Executive of the Washington Metro Rail Safety Commission. We appreciate Metro Rail taking the time that it needs. The cars were pulled from service in October due to a defect that causes the wheels to shift outward. Some were returned to service last month, but the Safety Commission suspended them again, saying Metro had failed to properly follow a plan for daily inspections of the cars. Nick Ainelli, WTOP News. New this afternoon, more than 4,800 people have signed on to a petition calling on Montgomery County officials to reinstate the school resource officer program. The change.org petition reads in part that it's clear that defunding SROs was a huge mistake. Earlier this week, Montgomery County Council members told reporters that in the wake of the shooting at Magruder High that left a 15-year-old critically injured, discussions about the role of school resource officers will happen. The county's SRO program was phased out this year. The latest COVID wave is definitely not over in Maryland school systems, as many students have been sidelined either by illness or exposure. So I, some of this news is not the greatest when we look at the number of quarantines. Assistant State Superintendent Mary Gable told the Maryland State Board of Education about how the number of students in quarantine has shot up recently. Montgomery County's school system, for example, had nearly 300 students in quarantine in early December, but nearly 15,000 as of last week. Staff quarantines are an issue as well. Cheryl Boast is the president of the Maryland State Education Association. We have crisis levels in staffing. For reasons that go beyond COVID, though, Gable says there is good news. Positivity rates are on the way down. John Aaron, WTOP News. Former EPA Administrator Andrew Wheeler is taking questions today from Virginia lawmakers who are voting on his appointment to Governor Glenn Youngkin's cabinet. Wheeler appeared before a state Senate committee yesterday, and today he's before a House committee. His nomination as Secretary of Natural and Historic Resources is facing some opposition, though, from environmental groups, Democrats. And earlier this month, more than 150 former EPA employees who've worked in both Democratic and Republican administrations sent a letter to the state Senate asking members to oppose Wheeler's nomination. They say he's weakened environmental protections and favors polluters. Wheeler took over at the EPA after then-President Trump accepted the resignation of his embattled administrator, Scott Pruitt. Just ahead, the latest on our cold forecast. It's 107. This is really happening. We're going to sell our home. This is Dave Johnson, and I think you might be saying that after experiencing Jennifer Young's Free Seller Seminar. It's Wednesday, February 2nd at 6.30. It's live, it's interactive, and to reserve your spot, go to JenniferYoungHomes.com. This is the time to get your questions answered. And if you're like... Peacock is streaming your favorite shows, movies, live sports, breaking news, exclusive originals, and every live WWE pay-per-view. It's The Office, Chris Lee Knows Best, and Peacock original shows like Punky Brewster. Peacock, watch for free of Great for more. Stream now at PeacockTV.com. Hi, it's John Taffer from Bar Rescue. Did you know the second building in America was a tavern? When I built my new restaurant franchise concept, Taffer's Tavern, I thought back to the roots of what makes a tavern a tavern. Timeless character. All while delivering an unbelievably delicious food and beverage experience. That paired with my 40 plus years in the industry provides a clear roadmap to success. Do you have what it takes to be a Taffer's Tavern franchisee? If so, I'd love to hear from you. Visit franchise.tafferstavern.com. 